But what is a hero piece? A hero piece is an article of clothing that is going to dominate your entire look. And by the time you have finished putting on a great trench coat, with the belt, and I always belted to the back, back to pull in and cinch in the waist. And you've got a piece of clothing. That is the first thing people are going to see when they notice you. So to me, when I go into a new season, I are always pick my hero pieces. Hey everybody, hi, it's Diane Gilman, formerly known as the Queen of Jeans, but now the proud host of my own podcast, Too Young to Be Old, and adding our second podcast every Thursday, Fashion Thursdays with Diane. So what we're going to talk about today are two things. Number one, wearing classics and what a classic truly means, and my fashion experiment. So I decided, and it has been rainy, if if you've been in the Northeast or really across anywhere in America, starting with California, you're going to know that we had a massive storm system with four days of soaking rain. So yeah, it was kind of natural for me to think, what am I going to wear as outerwear? Should I wear a quilted jacket? It's cold, but not that cold. Should I wear a blazer? Uh, It's warm, but it's not that warm. So I'm looking in my walk-in closet, and I see a trench coat. I haven't worn it in like five years. So I pull it out. It's Burberry. Okay, I try it on, and I think, yeah, I, I I, still like the proportions of it. I love the shade of beige, and I wear it the first day. And the first day, after seeing Kate Middleton come out with her um, cancer admission, her video, I loved and actually had almost the identical chunky navy blue and ivory striped sweater she was wearing with jeans, natural colored jeans. First day, I put on the Burberry trench coat, which doesn't have any plaid showing on the outside. So it's just beige on beige. And I put it with a chunky ivory-based turtleneck with a chunky sleeve that still fits inside the trench coat. I love the navy. I wear it with an indigo denim jegging, so that picks up on the navy. And I wear it with a navy sock sneaker. And you would think I created like some kind of fashion revolution. I walk into wherever I'm going and, you know, almost anywhere you go in New York City is going to be stylish and there are going to be a lot of judgmental stares. And people are saying, wow, you look so great. So I think to myself, yeah, I've, I've got something going here. There is something about a trench coat, and it doesn't have to be Burberry. I just happen to have it. I didn't want to spend the money on a new trench coat. It was classic styling. It came to right above the knee, and I love the shade of beige. And I, oh, by the way, and I also wore it with a navy um, printed leather handbag by Guillard, which is a French design house and very, very practical. It's actually a canvas bag that's printed and then coated, but it carries on the navy theme and it carried on and had ivory in it, so it was perfect. And I felt so confident. I absolutely loved it and frankly, I loved wearing the denim with it, too, and it was very crisp looking with the indigo denim substituting for a navy bottom, which you could do for sure. So then I thought, 
okay, Diane, you're a fashion designer. You're a fashionista. Let's play a game. What is your hero piece for spring 2024? Let's do a trench coat as a hero piece. I haven't worn a trench coat consistently for so many years. And when I was younger, and definitely before having breast cancer, I always wanted to be in much more forward fashion, uh, shocking fashion hey, look at me kind of fashion. But now I'm kind of going for what we call low lux, which is classics that speak to luxury but are not ostentatious. They don't scream at you. They just they just say, oh, yeah, kind of like, oh, yeah, old money great accrued fashion knowledge. So second day, it really got a little cold in New York. It was nasty. Big fat raindrops. I wore pastel cashmere, like a shade of sunny butter yellow. I wore it with a bleached out chambray denim skinny jean, so it was really pastel on pastel, and I put a matching cashmere hoodie with it. I got those from J. Crew, by the way. Uh, J. Crew has amazing quality for cashmere. They do a great spring cashmere program, and it's cashmere that doesn't pill and truly Last. I mean, I have cashmere sweaters from J. Crew from 10, 12 years ago that still look like new. So I loved wearing the butter yellow. I loved wearing soft color next to my face. And it gave the trench coat a completely different feel. So now we went more into almost suburban wear. Because you don't see a lot of color in New York. You definitely don't see a lot of soft color. And if you do see soft color, you always think to yourself, not a native New Yorker tourist. But I put it together with uh, an Hermes patterned scarf that had a whole series of pastels in it. So now I gave it right inside the jacket a little more interest with a print. The colors tied together the cashmere. And I loved wearing a bleached out denim jegging. It was almost like a um, a denim knit. So it was a knit that was dipped in denim. And I did try one out from um, a legging company called Hue, H-U-E. I got it off of Amazon, to tell you the truth. And for $29, it was great. I have very hard time, as anybody who knows me is a queen of jeans, and I invented a middle-aged jean because I have a very difficult time with my body finding a jean that fits. But I'm also now that I have graduated from TV and, and podcasting, I'm very curious about other denim brands. So Hughes seems to come the closest for me with something called Ultra Soft Denim. And I think I think the jigging was $29. So I wasn't making a huge investment, but what a difference it makes. I mean, it really looked soft and springy and, you know, I'm looking outside my window and I have Central Park and all of the tulips are blooming and the forsythia, so everything is butter yellow. So that's probably why I made the decision because all the flowers in Central Park in New York City, um, the first bloomers are yellow. And, you know, it was very interesting how color, and we've talked about this, is so emotionally uplifting. And people were like, oh, you look so chirpy. 
you look so cheerful. And it was on obviously a very dark, rainy day. So infusing a neutral, and the perfect thing about my trench coat is it's beige on beige on beige. There's a little bit of plaid on the inside, but you never see it while you're wearing it. So you're really free to add print and, and color. And people saw me as having a very sunny disposition for the day, not necessarily true, because of the color I was wearing. At the same time, the thing I love about a trench coat, and this is my hero piece for spring, my hero piece of outerwear, is everybody understands it. I spent a lifetime wearing some pretty out there kind of clothes. And yes, they were, pay attention to me, look at me, look at how fashion-y I am kind of clothing. But as I got older, I didn't want that much scrutiny on me anymore. I didn't want to shock people. I sort of want to like fit in gracefully, but still appear well-dressed and care about how I look. Oh, and by the way, with pastel cashmere and again, with the chunky navy and ivory sweater that I wore as my first outfit. One, I wore ivory sneakers. And with the pastel outfit, I wore what looked like a status loafer. So I was in super comfortable shoes. And, you know, I'm wearing little fashion socks now. So that became another point of color within the outfit. But the thing I loved about the outfit is I could have been in Manhattan, could have been in LA, could have been in Chicago, could have been in Dallas or Houston. And women would have felt comfortable around me, would have felt accepting, would have thought to themselves, you know, I never thought about wearing a trench coat that way. That's a, I like that look. I think that as we get older, um, people around us get very judgmental about the way we dress. And I know that's strange to say, but I think it really is a strength if you can dress in at least one piece that is so classic that nobody can doubt that you're someone they can talk to and relate to. So um, I love the Kate Middleton outfit, and I did a podcast about this last week and said, you know, Kate Middleton did more for denim than almost any celebrity ever has, when you have the future Queen of England wearing a straight leg, mid-tone jean for a major announcement that is going to travel around the world and be viewed by, what, two, three, four billion people. Don't think that that was by accident. So, I think one of my favorite things, if I have to say it, is taking a hero piece like a trench coat and pairing it with another hero piece that's not too overwhelming. Usually I don't like more than one hero piece per outfit, but for me, a skinny jean in mid-tone is about as hero piece as it gets. So I loved putting that together again. And I haven't had an outfit like that together for probably since before COVID, but absolutely felt great in that. And then I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to just switch my trench coat. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. You may be asking yourself, Diane, what are you talking about? I mean, you're all fashionisti, but what is a hero piece? A hero piece is an article of clothing that is going to dominate your entire look. And by the time you have finished putting on a great trench coat, 
with the belt, and I always belted to the back, back to pull in and cinch in the waist. And you've got a piece of clothing. That is the first thing people are going to see when they notice you. So to me, when I go into a new season, I are always pick my hero pieces. So I'm going to actually say I have two hero pieces this spring. First one is trench coat. Second one is a skinny denim jegging, which is just a pull-on jean. Easy to wear, but both in really bleached out chambray and then in a dark mid-tone to indigo. And the other thing that's so great about a hero piece is it becomes a foundation for creativity. So my third outfit of the week, I switched to another trench coat. I think I've talked about this one that I had bought from a clearance rack at Zara 20 years ago. And that is a very 70s vibe. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles and and belts and doodads and buckles and inner print that um, Burberry trench coat has, but it's very form-fitting. It's kind of lean, and it has a very 70s vibe for it. And then recently, on the advice of a good friend of mine, I discovered basics at Amazon. So the poor boy, better known as poor boy, turtleneck, ribbed, wide rib, five by five rib that I'm wearing is cotton and spandex. I got it off Amazon basics. Believe it or not, I think $29. Hand washable. Fantastic. I love this. So I wore the third day the Zara trench coat in beige, a light beige. This beige turtleneck, again, mid-tone denim jegging and sock sneakers in navy. And I was like, I love this outfit. I could wear it again and again and again. So along with my hero piece, which is my trench coat, and my other hero piece, and hero pieces are those articles of clothing in your closet. You can go closet shopping for them that are so versatile, so understandable, so flattering, and so foundational that they become your go-tos and grabs, grab ass. I'm grabbing that out of the closet. Like you want to wear them every day of the week. You have to stop yourself from wearing them so you don't look so redundant. So I went for the neutral poor boy sweater, very 70s, the Zara trench coat, very 70s, put it with a jean. But then I also later in the day wanted to get active, walk in Central Park. So I took off the jean, jegging, and I went for a neutral, so I was all in beige active legging and a beige tennis shoe. And I mean, I just loved it. I looked like a fashion genius with the almost no effort at all. And you know what? I went out this morning to run errands and I went for the Burberry trench coat again. As an older girl, and you guys may agree with me, you want to find those pieces you can really lean into. You want to find those pieces where you say to yourself, there's no way I can look bad in this. So this morning when I went out, I put it together with a cable sweater. It's cold out today. It's close to freezing for some weird reason in New York City. I put it together with um, another cotton sweater I got off Amazon Basics. Again, about $29, maybe even $24. Cable knit in front. 
in ivory. And this time I put the outfit together with a black faux leather stretch legging and a black sock sneaker. So it was ivory, black faux leather, and of course the beige from the trench coat. And this time, because I was wearing the Burberry trench coat, I actually wore it with a Burberry scarf. I love outfits where you cannot go wrong. I love outfits that are not creating a revolution, but more like an evolution in your wardrobe. You know, um, I'm 78 years old. It, I've got a body that's like a, a meatball canopy on two toothpicks. And so I try to take advantage of my skinny legs. I try to hide my middle. A trench coat is great for that. And I like wearing the tradition of it. Now, I couldn't say that to you when I was a younger woman. I wanted to go for the furthest out, the most, what the French call outre fashion there is, which means really out there. But not anymore. I I want to kind of be in the flow of things. And I don't know why, but there seems to be an element of female society that's just fascinated if you sort of keep your nature going after a certain age. And so my nature was always fashion. And sometimes I'm just not in the mood. I don't want to put it together in some intricate manner. And you know what? Honestly, a hero piece is great for that. You can have, I would say, a series of hero pieces in your wardrobe. For me, it's a classic trench coat. It's almost a retro-inspired layering piece, either a turtleneck or a t-shirt or a classic shirt, cotton shirt. It's whatever bottom silhouette works for you especially in denim. Denim is a great social connector. It That is, if I was going to take a five-piece wardrobe to Europe this summer, it would be a trench coat, a perfect layering piece, a denim jean, a loafer, and probably a couple of turtlenecks. And I'd be fine every day of the week. Use your accessories or shop for your accessories, whether it's earrings. And I happen to love gold hoops. Um, whether it's a necklace that suddenly takes takes it into a more business-like realm or a dressy realm. The new necklaces are all chunky chains that come down uh, mid-chest and then a big medallion. Well, it could be your astrological sign. Um, and a good loafer is going to take you everywhere. And oh, by the way, I am also a big lover of sock sneakers, which you can also get on Amazon for nineteen ninety nine, and throw them into a washer and a dryer. Yeah, for real. And they are so comfortable. So maybe that's what you wear on an airplane. But the good news is wherever you're going, you are socially acceptable. If I was going to Paris or London for summer, I would also add a very simple linen blazer. So on the days that are too hot to wear a trench coat you're, or not rainy, you've got a blazer to wear. And then have fun. You know, it's it's really a challenge, and it's actually a lot of fun to take that one hero piece and then start building little outfits around it. And if you've got the time, if you've got a couple of free hours in a day, just start pulling stuff out of your closet. Oh, look at that. I haven't used that striped t-shirt in years. Hey, wait a minute. That looks really good with the trench coat. Oh, look, 
Those are the perfect loafers to wear with that this year, and I'll accent those with striped socks or something. Fashion should be, I think, past the age of 50, the pieces that you start to buy to put together into your um, wardrobe, there should be a classic that you don't have to rebuy that become great investment items, and those are my hero pieces. The challenge is always finding a bottom. So I want to talk about denim bottoms for just one second. I am a fashion girl. I was in the fashion industry for 50 years. Trust me, I get it. But when you see this barrage of PR, about, oh, the big oversized baggy jean, or now they're calling it the balloon-like jean. Ladies, let's be real. That's for someone like Jennifer Lopez, who has a 24-inch waist at 50 years old and exercises like eight hours a day and has a six-pack. If you are going to go very big or very broad on the bottom, it either needs to be drapey, like find yourself the perfect, not wide leg, but relaxed leg, gabardine trouser. I personally don't like trousers because they always have a stable waist. Not good for me. My waist is huge. They usually have pleats. I have a rounded stomach that pushes the pleats out. That is not the greatest look in the world for me. A lean bottom is. So at the very widest, for me, I'll go for a, a lean straight leg, but I really like a skinny best of all. I like a bottom that has a lot of spandex in it. I like to have the breathability of that elasticity, and I like to have the movement. And then I'm just past the point of wearing high heels. Yeah. Well into my mid to late 60s, I was still wearing Christian Louboutin, five-inch heels on television on QVC HSN. But those days are kind of gone and passed. And actually, it was very difficult wearing them out in New York where a lot of the streets are cobblestone. And you're going to kill yourself. You're going to break your neck wearing a, a heel. So... We should thank the fashion gods that the styling right now is all about flats, a ballet flat. Oh, and by the way, they have interpreted sock sneakers, which are stretch fabric, into ballet flats so you can get ultimate comfort. I saw that from Vavaya. Um, that's, a, that's a shoe brand. So we are talking about elements of camouflage, hiding your middle, we're talking about elements of investment, like a good, really good trench coat. We're talking about classics that go in and out of favor with high fashion, but truly never go out of style. So if you are getting into an area where you're winding down your career, you don't need formalized office clothes every day. And on the other hand, you're going to go into an era of kind of fixed income. It pays to buy those hero items that are going to last you literally a lifetime. So I hope you enjoyed my hero piece rant about my number one springtime fashion item, the trench coat. And what a hero piece really means and what it represents to all of us. And I say, happy spring. Dress pretty, dress classic, and dress comfortable. Thanks for listening to Fashion Thursdays with Diane. Enjoy. Thank you so much for listening to Too Young to Be Old podcast. The episode may be over, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at The Diane Gilman or 
visit our website, thedianegilbert.com. If you like the show, leave us a rating or a review and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And until then, don't forget, age is just a number. Together, we'll prove that we are all too young to be old.